Hi, welcome to another edition of Meet the Author. Tonight we have author Casey Morley, who wrote the book Crawling Out. How are you, Casey? I'm great, Jason. How are you doing tonight? Pretty good. Tonight we have a special edition because we're not just going to talk about Casey as an author and her book Crawling Out, but we're also going to talk about the author journey and the author process and the search for getting your book out there and what you have to go through to do that. So it's a very special edition tonight. It says here, One woman's journey to an empowered life after breaking a cycle of abuse no one should have to endure, crawling out. And I, I must say that I really like the cover, okay? Thank you very much. Before I tell the audience a little bit about the book, um, can you talk about how you decided on this cover? What did you do to get that cover? I actually, um, I own a hair salon, and one of my clients works out of New York. And he was talking to me about his boss wrote this book and how they market and things like that. And I'm like, oh, that sounds wonderful, but I don't even have a cover yet. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, we do that. So I'm like, really, really? So he connected me with his design team. And uh, we emailed after this and that, and I gave her some of my ideas, and she sent things back to me, and I would, of course, show my clients and get feedback, and then um, just the back and forth, and as we went through that, we ended up deciding on this. So, networking, right? Yes, but, exactly. You know, if I remember, because I know you from a meeting of CAPA, Connecticut Authors and Publishers, Yes. and... There was a little bit more to this. You came to one of the network meetings? I did, yes. So tell us a little bit more about how you came to a meeting and you presented a cover and people discussed it. Originally, um, the first few thoughts were about a, a crawling baby because of the title, Crawling Out. Mm -hmm. And my journey, to me, was crawling. Mm -hmm. One step at a time. Healing is not a straight line from A to B, so, and it's not in one minute, not mm -hmm. one day you, f you figure it out, the next day it's done. So, um, my vision of a crawling baby, but what was coming back to me seemed to look more mm -hmm. eerie. And so. What, so when I was at the Kappa meeting, that was the general census from the group that... And then CAPA stands for Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association. Yes. And you also, another thing at the CAPA meeting, <clears throat> because I was at this meeting, um, we asked, an idea was for authors to share reviews. And next thing I know, when you want, when you want to, going through the process of being on the show, you send me a review of one of the people, <laughs> Chuck Maselli, who was at that meeting. And I know Chuck, and Chuck was actually... Um, a guest on this show previously, he wrote Amanda's Room, a really great book, and then I see that he wrote this fantastic review for Were you. Were you excited? Met. Yes. <laughs> so I'm was gonna I. Read, I'm going to read the review. You know? <laughs> He's already now a famous author after yeah, he's been on yeah. the show. I see his face and name everywhere. And, and what a great guy for me to be <laughs> hanging with, right? Right. <laughs> so, Casey Morley's Crawling Out has all the elements of a thriller novel. Violence, demonic villains, danger, corrupt officials, and impossible obstacles. I think he's talking about his book. The tragedy and the triumph of the story is that it is not fiction. Tragedy in the horrific abuse Morley endured as a child, and later as a woman and mother. Triumph in her unstoppable spirit and her unshakable faith bent on breaking the cycle of abuse. This is a vital book for anyone who suffers abuse or works with victims, and for everyone intent on ending the violence. I just want to uh, put in that the book is not just about violence and abuse, but it's also about the journey, how to have a successful life after these uh, roadblocks to having a good life. Um, so May I also mm -hmm. add something sure. to that? I, sure. I feel my, my story is also about survival, mm -hmm. growth, forgiveness, and this is my favorite, tapping into the rod of resilience that I believe each and and every one of us has within us. Wow, that's fantastic. And we're going to talk about that, and you'll give us some examples on the show. So here it says soon to be published, but is it published yet? No, no. Okay, so it's pre-published, and this is a, a first for the show because 
you actually told me somebody said to you you couldn't, don't mention names, but they said to you you couldn't be on the show because you didn't publish a book yet. And I wanted to correct that concept and say, no, it's about the author journey too and what the author has to do. It's called meet the author, not necessarily meet the published author, okay? And this so. is a typical newsletter. So, um, And the exciting thing about this newsletter, I mean, it is the actual cover and the actual back cover. And, of course, my author photo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's not have. forget that one. Okay. <laughs> Even that was a, a feedback thing so with all my... A little bit of information on how to, you know, what process an author has to go through. Um, it's not just I got up in the morning, found an agent, and they did everything. Oh, right? no. And, okay. and this is a typical newsletter that I send out on uh -huh. my website for okay. like a... Um, Oh, so you already have a website and I a do. newsletter. This I do. is prepared for the big day. Right? Well, I, I should say I went to um, a Hay House Writers Workshop in October of mm -hmm. last year. And I have, I'll be honest, I, I left there like panic because I learned <clears throat> you need a platform. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> What's a platform? And then you need to do computer work. And I'm like, what? Okay. I cried all the way well, home you know on the train. <laughs> really, because um, I'm also an artist artist. And some artists, when they first said, you know, you, ha you no longer need to send photos of your paintings into jury shows. We're taking digital photos now. It's like, what? I have to put that on a CD. I remember that yeah, conversation that. a couple years ago. Today, everyone's walking around with a smartphone. You remember that little flutter and stuff? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, let me read what the book's about. How does a child know what is acceptable or unacceptable? normal or abnormal, good or bad, that children aren't slaves or women aren't beaten. How do they get out of something they don't know they're in? Crawling out, and that's how you get the title now, very good, is a true account of the life of a child raised with a dysfunctional family filled with abuse, domestic violence, and alcoholism that continued well into her adult life. Casey Morley has spent the last 25 years coping with and crawling out from abuse, working hard to break the cycle, to end generations of dysfunction, to give her son a chance. Her story chronicles some of the abuse and follows her as she deletes what she was taught, fights to shed 50 plus years of shame and guilt that wasn't hers to carry. Often dismissed and devalued as a child, Casey defied the odds and overcame a deep sense of worthlessness Unmasked in secrecy, many victims carry and learn to forgive. Very nice. Thank you. So, um, let me start asking some questions. How did writing this book come about? To be totally honest, it, it was divinely led. I, um, I met with a friend, a professor from Hartford, and I, I asked her if she would help me. She said she would be honored. Help you in what? Writing the book? Help me to start. I'm like, like mm -hmm. what? Tell your story. Mm -hmm. do, yeah, what do you do first? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, do you remember asking me to write your story a few years back? Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, no. Mm -hmm. And then I was well into writing. We, we made an outline together, and so I was well into writing my first draft, handwritten on a legal um, pad. And... Uh, I came across this homework. I was looking for a, a picture, actually a fire or flight response picture. And I came across this homework I had from my PTSD doctor. PTSD is post-traumatic stress, stress, stress disorder. disorder. And she, she formed a, a woman's group while I was doing a private sessions with her. And one of my homeworks was, what do I want? Mm -hmm. And on that trusty old legal pad I seem to carry around a lot, um, the very last line on my first page said, I think I'll write a book. Mm -hmm. Second page, very last line, halfway down says, I'm going to write a book. I have no memory of that. So that's why mm -hmm. I say I was, um, spirit nudged me way before I even recognized it. Mm -hmm. So before long, I was sitting at my kitchen table at three in the morning while my little guy slept. <laughs> and I just wrote and wrote Kept and wrote. Journal. That's mm -hmm. like, you know, that's actually one of the um, advices they'll give in workshops. They'll say, just keep, you know, write and write and write. Um, and so I have to share did. as well, the journals I kept way before that, mm -hmm. which was more court in, in mm -hmm. my mind, mm -hmm. um, those journals, even though they were hard to get through, mm -hmm. 
it was allowed me to have the, the facts that I have in my story. Right, those were the material that because you, you had. You can't remember, you know, not, it's not by memory. That's Today we sure. call it a blog. <laughs> And still didn't have to have a journal anymore. And just in October, I didn't know what that was. <laughs> right. So, there you go. <laughs> so, one thing though, um, the book, you say it's not just a book, but it's also a tool. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I see my book as a tool because tools help us do things. The tools help us open things, close things, build things, fix things. And I've had experiment readers um, the past year and a half, say, some got to read two or three chapters, some got to read all the chapters, and there's about 10 or 12 of them, and each and every one of them, no matter what walk of life they're on, they were gently nudged to a new awareness, and I took that as a, the tool for opening someone's eyes, nudging them to the new awareness, maybe something they read will close a door for them, and that's why I see it as a tool. And so, another question is, why did you write this book to begin with? I wrote this book, originally, my, my heart's desire was to give hope to people that I felt I was in the group I was in, that they too have the strength and courage to crawl out. And little time goes by, it started to evolve, but wait a minute, I thought of when I was 35 years old, and I heard the word dysfunctional, I had to go home and look it up. Mm -hmm. And so I lived 35 years of my life not knowing I was in something that I needed to get out of. And we're going to skip a little bit ahead right now and go towards the end of the story. Uh, you have a picture there of a beauty salon. Tell us what you do today. Oh, actually, I own my own business for the last 23 years. I originally was going to be a CPA. But mm -hmm. when I moved out so young... And that's all in the book. There's no school that, that I could walk to. So I became a hairdresser. And I know now that um, I was so... I was nominated class quiet, believe it or not. And class was what? Quiet. <laughs> class quiet, okay. So I was a little afraid to talk. And when the phone rang at the first salon I worked at, I kind of had to go to the bathroom all the time. <laughs> but now I answer the phone freely. And, and I believe I... Standing behind my chair taught me how to speak, and I say to my clients now, listen to me now, because the tickets are going to be expensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Thank and you. And in the middle of the book, mm -hmm. you know, you have to, when you started crawling out, maybe you got halfway, so the healing process started. Tell us about where the healing process started. Actually, it really did start when I was 35, when I went home and looked up the word, and I was devastated that just, I... Just last year? <laughs> exactly, Jason. <laughs> Um, I was devastated to learn such fact, and, and at the time, the gentleman I was dating came from the same thing. I really felt like I was diagnosed with incurable cancer. Mm -hmm. So, but in so my... Why did you feel that? Pardon me? Why did you think you had incurable cancer? That's how devastated I was, because I, in reality, as it started, because it, again, it's not, you know, in one minute you, you realize this. I realized one or two therapy sessions doesn't fix this. Mm -hmm. it, it's so much bigger, and as, as it got bigger, and as I started to understand how deep the wounds go, it, it's just big. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the first books I received that's in my, my story as well, um, it's by Louise Hay, Heal Your Body A to Z. And it was the first glimpse I had at how your thoughts could bring on, as Louise puts it, dis-ease. And when I looked up thyroid issues and high blood pressure issues and the thought patterns, I was like, oh my God. Even poison ivy is like, oh my gosh, you know. So um, this led me down, I'll say, a path of reading... Uh, Hay House Authors, which is all about metaphysical and what you think about, you bring about, and... So, and you're a fan. I am a you're fan. A fan. Okay. I am a fan. So now, uh, you mentioned that in a prominent place in the book is you raising your son. So let's take a picture and tell us about uh, what the book talks about with your son, and, you know... He'll probably kill me because I'm going to say this is my little guy. <laughs> But he's not a little guy. He's actually six foot five. I say that. I wouldn't that, you know? <laughs> He's actually six foot five. Um, six foot five. He's yes. Really taller than me. Yes. Okay. And he's a remarkable young man. 
He's at, at Central State College. He's in his third year. He's taken criminal justice. And um, one thing that touches me is one of his sentences in his college essay was he... That's okay. He wanted to be the one that was called on, upon for, for women and children. Nice. And I, that was as touching as that is for me, I realized even though I protected him, got him away from the abuse by the time he was five, I always say children are what they live. He knew, you know, babies know, mm -hmm. babies in the womb know what's mm -hmm. going on, you know, so, um, but I'm grateful that I, I separated all of that life when he was just five. He has only five years to undo instead of 50. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm proud of that. Did he also have to go through any process or he's okay? Well, I've, I actually, when he went to kindergarten, I went to the um, school officials and put him in. Oh, okay. And, um, so you're proactive. Very much so. And in mm -hmm. fact, the social worker said to me, we've never had a parent do this. Wow, very good. So and, and I just wanted to always smart. be ahead, you know, like, mm -hmm. in fact, when I gave birth to Michael, mm -hmm. I knew that I was going to be doing this by myself. Mm -hmm. and, and I was a, a new salon owner, mm -hmm. and I didn't have the money to mm -hmm. have daycare, so I knew I would be bringing him. So mm -hmm. I tried really hard to never give him anything that I would have to take away, like okay. a pacifier or something. So, so now that you mentioned salon owner, one of the things you talk about in the book is the difficulty in, you know, getting to pay for this and getting to pay for that when you don't have resources. What, and I like the part about where you talked about where you had to make a choice between paying which bills. Do you have any advice for people today uh, who are in a bad, who everybody's in the same boat in bad economy about how to be successful with finances? <laughs> First, don't spend more than you have. <laughs> That's what uh, Charles Dickens said. <laughs> yeah. you know, if you have... If you, if you spend 19 cents and you earn 20, you'll have a happy life. And if you spend 20 cents and earn 19 cents, you'll have a bad life. So I've always been very frugal, but I, I come from um, not very privileged and uh, learned how to make the best of what I have. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am frugal, but I also know when to spend. And for myself, I would always just prioritize what has to be first. Even when it came to the, to the point you're talking about, the light bill. Mm -hmm. I had to choose one month the salon bill or the home bill. And I picked the salon bill because I figured if I can't go to work, I really have no money. So <clears throat> that, that was my thinking. I had someone, one of my readers ask me like, why didn't you move out of town? And why did you do, go work for somebody else? None of that made sense to me on a financial level because, for one, I owned this condo. Well, I had a mortgage, of course, but mm -hmm. how could I walk away from a mortgage that I've already worked whatever years it was? And if I moved out of town, then it costs more money for gas to get from there to my salon. If I went to a new salon, well, then how could I bring my baby? Mm -hmm. No owner will let me, bring, you know. So it was always those kind of things. You had to stay in fight. You had to hold your ground, as they say. Exactly. Um, your editor is in the audience. You have a very fine editor that helped you through the process. You want to read a letter that your editor wrote about the book? I would love to. Go ahead. And she's my friend. And she's your friend. And I love her. What's her name? Her name is Nancy Hooper. Okay, now I know who your friend is. <laughs> <laughs> Bearing your soul in public requires courage and a strong sense of self-worth. Casey Morley had proved throughout her life that she had a deep well of the former, but she had virtually none of the latter when she began writing her story, longhand, on a yellow legal pad. What drove her to commit words to paper was determination, to heal, to break the cycle of abuse and domestic violence she had lived for 50 plus years and to try to make a better life for her young son, Michael. I did not come to the process until several years later when the script on the pile of legal pads was transcribed to computer files. But by that time, I'd known Casey for about 20 years and considered her a casual friend. When she asked me to edit her manuscript, all I think I asked her was, Are you sure? 
I'm known to have a heavy hand with the red pen. Between you and I, I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I quickly realized that the red pen had very little place here. What makes the story that what makes this story so difficult to read or imagine palatable is Casey's voice, the tone with which she writes. <clears throat> it's as if you are and she are sharing a cup of coffee and she's relating her story. Casey and I worked for about three years polishing the book. During that time, we shed tears beyond imagination, shared her grief, and bolstered each other. I watched Casey move through the cycle of growth as she read the book to me, page by page. Many times as I edited on the computer, asked questions, brought out more stories. She progressed from barely able to speak because of the tears, to anger, to acceptance, to moving on. Where she initially had no self-worth, now she holds her head up high and proud. Courage is still an innate part of her. She relies on her strong spirituality and sense of right and wrong to call attention to the horrors that are, are abuse and domestic violence. Working to curb those horrors is her goal. Crawling out tells of a life no one should ever experience. Casey did. Casey survived. Casey thrives in her new life. I am proud to call her my dear friend, my sister. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so what is your overall mission with this book? And with that question, you have a poster here that might help you with that answer. Uh, maybe you can point to the poster and answer that question. Well, this was the beginning of the mission. I, for my, on my website, I, I start to introduce a, a bit of my journey and that my goal is to give victims hope. And I invite people to join me on the journey because I blog on my website. And I believe that a blog... I, I give a little piece of me, a little piece of my story, and a gentle nudge. I love the little dent, gentle nudge. And I, I also promote that you never know which blog you'll be reading that will give you that nudge to, to see a new perception. And again, remember the group that don't even know they're in it. Mm -hmm. And also the group, there, as my journey went on, there's two others. There's the group that... Um, live a gilded life, they have no idea what's going on right next door to them. Mm -hmm. And I also hope that the people, the good people that are fighting in the forefront for domestic violence, that it comes from an intellectual level to the gut. Mm -hmm. Really understand the victim's perspective. Very good. And, and um, then the, the last piece on this newsletter is that I am a salon owner and I do talk about healing mind, body and soul because after I detoxed my heart and soul on paper and read it a billion times to Nancy, <laughs> it moved me to detox my body. Mm -hmm. I was um, a candida person, and once I er eradicated the yeast, just health just started pouring in. I, I am prescription-free and a little older than 35. <laughs> And I am now also a detox coach at the salon. And a detox coach. Things yes. are moving. Yes. Who's that little guy? This is a teddy bear. I brought that along. My son just had knee surgery, so it's really his. Your son just had knee surgery? Yeah, uh, he has a. Uh, he got hurt at work. Oh, uh, okay. So but he, he's not in college anymore? Or he, he no, he is. is. Um, oh, he's working and going to college at the same yes, time. Okay. Yes, yes. He's his mother's child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I just thought it would be great to bring as a little prop because um, the girl in the picture holds a teddy bear. That's, oh, it's not the same teddy bear, though. No, we try to get close. But, but if close. you didn't say that, nobody would know. <laughs> well. Naughty boy. Be, you know. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> and you're proud of it. I'm proud of it. You call me bad boy. But, uh, I'll do that next. Nice. <laughs> uh, one last question. Mm. Um, this is my own personal question, and I, um, from reading the book, you know, something that always uh, a pet peeve of mine has been to suggest, and I've heard it on the radio this week, actually, that how come, what's your position on should parents have a course, like a driver's license, when they go for a wedding license? I mean, you have a wedding's license, but what exactly are you licensing? I mean, there's no course. What do you think about that, that parents should have a course? Do you think the state is interfering a little bit, or it could avoid a lot of problems. What do you think? I actually think people in general should go, should take a class. 
mm -hmm. and learn about the subconscious mind. I think if more people were aware of how much the subconscious mind affects their everyday life, if they understood that 90 to 98% of the choices we make are from the subconscious mind and that that mind is, subconscious mind is a storage locker our life experiences are in there our fears our anxieties survival patterns um, messages from our parents and it creates makes us who we are today on every level physical our persona mm -hmm. and I just feel that if that was even in class, elementary school, and of course elementary level, there'd be a better understanding of why people operate the way they do and less judgment, mm -hmm. less finger pointing. Okay, so we're gonna pretty much end very soon, but before we do that, I'd like you to read a portion of your book for our readers. Thank you. Before you read the portion though, there's one more question I do have to ask. Mm -hmm. um, I remember meeting you at a meeting where uh, for authors, and the um, and you were looking for an agent, and you gave your stuff to some agents. What was the uh, response from agents? Um, I I met with literary agents three years in a row, and there's usually two or three agents during the day, and some were very sweet <laughs> mm -hmm. and gave me advice. Like like one of them advised me to read the story, the book, uh, Child Called It. Um, but what was happening for me is each year they would tell me something different. Mm -hmm. One year, oh, bring this down here and bring this up there. The next year mm -hmm. I did that and they said something different. Mm -hmm. So I, it just, and it's really difficult for me since I own a salon. I work Saturdays, I work Monday mm -hmm. night, you know, to get the help I need from, from the group. So it's, I sort of feel like I'm, I'm scrambling and learning from Chuck a lot. And okay. <laughs> um, but it was never consistent. Okay. So you're going to do things for yourself. Read very quickly <laughs> a portion of the book. My days now consist of smiling and pretending. My nights of crying and praying to exhaustion. It was truly a physical and emotional vicious cycle. All I could think about was that I had to save my little boy from this kind of life. God, please show me the way. I was clear on one thing. I was done. I was done being patient, done being the polite little Christian girl. I was done listening. I was done talking to and dealing with people who would not help us. I was prepared to plow through the planet to find help to protect my child. As I said before, in my really angry moments, I wish the police department would blow up. Mm -hmm. Just poof away for not being there to protect us. It is one thing not to protect me, an adult woman, but not to protect an innocent child was inexcusable. Wow, very powerful. So, Casey, yes, what we do Jason. on this show is we always sign over a book to the show. Okay. Here we go. So, where do I do that, Jason? In the beginning. Here? The first page, yes. And what do you want me to write? It's up to you, you're the author. Oh. Usually people write best wishes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but we'll read that now. Oh. Okay. You cheated. <laughs> I cheated. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to your new awareness, your gentle nudge. Very nice. And that is another episode of Meet the Author with Casey Morley.